This is a review for the Roborock Q7 Max and Q7 Max Plus. The Q7 Max Plus comes with an auto empty dock while the Q7 Max does not. Otherwise, the two robots are identical. Roborock makes two different series of LiDAR robot vacuums, the S series and the Q series, with S series robots like the S7 Max V being the more feature rich option and Q series robots like this Q7 Max being the more value oriented option. Among the three Q series robots, the other two being the Q5 and the standard Q7, the Q7 Max is best optimized for mopping. So if you're looking for a good value LiDAR robot vacuum that's also well optimized for mopping, the Q7 Max is the best option from Roborock. How does it compare to all of the other robot vacuums we've tested though? Uh, let's take a look at how it performed in our tests. The Q7 Max's airflow was measured at 14 CFM. Its suction was measured at 0.1 kPa. This robot has the same brush roll, brush roll compartment, and side brush with exactly the same dimensions as the standard Q7, the S7, and even the S7 Max V. And so just like those robots, it has an average size direct cleaning path as its brush roll compartment is an average width at six and a half inches wide. Its overall cleaning path is much wider as the robot uses its large side brush to pull debris from the perimeter of the robot into its direct cleaning path. With this design and despite its below average measured airflow and suction, the Q7 Max performed very well in most of our debris pickup testing, including our carpet stress test. This robot, just like most other robot vacuums we tested, also used repeated movement over the same areas to get a proper cleaning in this test over time. In our carpet deep clean test on default power, the Q7 Max picked up 5 grams of debris after 3 passes over an area of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris. On maximum power, it picked up 8 grams of debris in the same test. Moving on to our hard floor stress test, the Q7 Max once again picked up all debris types very well. Again, it used its wide cleaning path and repeated movement over the same areas to clean up well in this test over time. The Q7 Max also performed very well cleaning edges. As part of a regular cleaning cycle, it passed close and parallel to all of the edges of a room. This robot passed sufficiently close to these edges to clean up edge debris very effectively. In our robot vacuum crevice test, the Q7 Max did not perform well on default power or on maximum power though most other robot vacuums we've tested also did not perform well in this test. In our human hair pickup test, the Q7 Max picked up all the hair, but most of that hair wasn't pulled into its dustbin. 70 to 90% of the hair it picked up tangled around its brush roll and had to be cleaned off manually. Though because of its bristleless design, it was fairly easy to remove hair from the robot's brush roll. The Q7 Max performed much better in our pet hair pickup test. It didn't pick up all of the tufts in one pass, but it did eventually pick up and collect all of the shorter pet hair used for this test in its dustbin. The Q7 Max is very well equipped for mopping. It has a very large 350 milliliter reservoir. For comparison, even the top rated S7 Max V only has a 200 milliliter water tank. The standard Q7 only has a 180 milliliter tank. Its larger reservoir allows the Q7 Max to clean for a longer period of time over a larger surface area before needing to be refilled. The Q7 Max also features electronic control of its water tank. This is a feature it shares with the S7 Max V, but not the standard Q7. With the Q7 Max and S7 Max V, you can dial in the exact amount of water you want the reservoir to release onto the robot's mopping pad using the Roborock companion app. The water tank also doesn't release any water onto the pad when the robot's not mopping. With a standard Q7, you have to set the drip rate using a physical switch on the tank. Water will also start dripping from its water tank as soon as it's attached to the robot. All of these robots use essentially the same size mopping pad that's dragged across the floor to clean it. The S7 Max V's mop does vibrate while the Q7 and Q7 Max's mops do not. However, this didn't make any difference in our testing. All three robots performed very similarly in our tests. In this dry down stain test, the Q7 Max cleaned the whole test surface in a single cleaning cycle. So did the S7 Max V and the Q7. In this sticky stain test, the Q7 Max again cleaned the whole test surface in a single cleaning cycle. 
both the S7 Max V and standard Q7 had very small light staining left over after a single cleaning cycle. And so we ran them again to get a full and proper cleaning in this test. Considering all of the variables involved, this difference in performance is not statistically significant. And so we would say that all three robots essentially offer equal performance cleaning this type of stain as well. Moving on to navigation, we tested the Q7 Max's cleaning efficiency and coverage in two different environments, an empty room and a cluttered room. In our empty room testing, we can see how the Q7 Max starts its cleaning cycle, padding along the edges of the room, and then cleans across the center of the room neatly in rows. It first cleans in vertical rows and then in horizontal rows. This crisscross cleaning pattern ensures the highest probability of the robot being able to pick up, especially hard to pick up, debris. The robot also gets excellent coverage across the whole room. In our clutter room testing, we again see the robot padding along the edge of the room to start the run before it starts cleaning around the various obstacles in the room. Using LiDAR, it pads very precisely and efficiently around all of these obstacles. It gets excellent coverage in this test as well. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is a full-fledged mapping robot that has the ability to map multiple floors of your home. And using the Roborock Companion app, you can label different parts of the generated map, set the robot to clean specific parts of the map, or set it to stay out of certain parts of the map. In the same chart, also note the Q7 Max's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's diameter and height. These dimensions make the Q7 Max one of the larger robot vacuums we've tested. Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, first let's talk about what we like. The Q7 Max deep cleans carpet very well on maximum power. It also picks up surface level debris very well, both on carpet and hard floors. It also paths sufficiently close to edges to pick up edge debris without issue. Perhaps the strongest positive for the Q7 Max is its mopping features and performance. It has a very large reservoir, and it features app control of its reservoir. It also performed very well in both of our mopping tests. The Q7 Max also features excellent navigation. It didn't have any trouble in both our empty room and clutter room navigation testing. Finally, we also really like the self-empty functionality of this robot. Recall that this self-empty docking station is included with the Q7 Max Plus, while the Q7 Max is only compatible with this docking station. Moving on to what we dislike about this vacuum, the biggest negative for the Q7 Max, just as it is for most other Roborocks we tested, is how easily it tangles with longer hair. It's very easy to detangle its bristless brush roll, but we were disappointed to see how poorly this brush roll handles actually tangling with longer hair. Another negative is dust bin size. The Q7 Max does have a slightly larger bin than the S7 Max V, but it's much smaller than the standard Q7's bin. Its dust bin is small because it shares the same housing as its water reservoir, and its water reservoir size was made a priority over its dust bin size. The robot's small dust bin is less of an issue if you buy it with a self-empty docking station, as it will just automatically empty its bin when it's full. But if you buy the robot without a self-empty docking station, its smaller bin will require you to empty it more frequently. The last negative for this robot is its noise output on maximum power. This isn't really an issue if you plan on running the robot on hard floors. It cleans up very well on default power on hard floors. And on default power, it isn't very loud. However, on carpet, it has to run on maximum power for the best deep cleaning performance. And on maximum power, it is very loud. In terms of general recommendations, Roborock Q-Series robots in general are very good quality mid-range robot vacuums. They offer better general cleaning performance and especially better navigation than most other mid-range robot vacuums we've tested. Among Q-Series robots, the Q7 Max is recommended if mopping is a priority for you. The Q7 Max has a much larger reservoir than the standard Q7 and it features app control of the reservoir's drip rate, while the standard Q7 does not. The Q5 can't mop at all. It doesn't come with a mop, and it's not compatible with any mopping attachments. The Q7 Max is not recommended if you don't need a robot for mopping. If you only need a robot vacuum, not a robot vacuum and mop, 
we recommend the Q5 instead. The Q5 is usually considerably cheaper and outside of mopping offers essentially identical performance to the Q7 Max. So in summary, Q series robots in general are highly recommended. And among Q series robots, the Q5 is recommended if you only need a robot for vacuuming. The Q7 is recommended if you primarily need to vacuum and only occasionally need to mop. And the usually more expensive Q7 Max is recommended if you need to vacuum and mop frequently. See the description of this video for buy links for all of these robots, as well as a link to the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend. And thank you for watching.